I just rode my awesome Ninja H2 with its brand new polished titanium Van Diemen exhaust that's already changing, rainbow colors, looking magnificent. Now I'm going to ride the Busa with the world's, well, the United States first. Heated grips on my Busa. If you're interested in getting this installed onto your new Busa, it'll probably work with the older Busa too. It's an original Suzuki part. The part number is right there. So if you want heated grips on your uh, 2022 or probably first and second gen boosts also, I'm sure you can order that part from your Suzuki dealer and get it installed. We'll take another quick look. There is the switch, has three levels. Press and hold it, it turns green, it blinks three times, letting you know it's at the highest setting. Press it again, it's blinking twice. One more time. And now it's one blink, letting you know it's at the lowest setting. I'm going to start off by trying it at the... Now it's off. Okay. So I'm going to start off by trying it at the highest setting. It'll do that about seven times, and then it'll turn solid green, letting you know that the heated grip is on. But yeah, still waiting on Uncle Brock to, uh, to get some parts in so that we can get the full CT Megaphone titanium exhaust installed onto this beast, his lowering links, and everything else that Uncle Brock wants to send me for this awesome motorcycle. I'm hoping to take this bike to Brock's headquarters here and uh, make an awesome video with Uncle Brock uh, installing the parts on to this sick savage of a Hayabusa. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let it warm up while I, uh, <laughs> while I put the, uh, the manual and uh, the Ninja H2 back inside the garage. <laughs> so, heated grips on the Busa. How do I feel about that? Well, it is amazing. It is really nice. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it's 56 degrees here today, which is kind of cool. And the heated grips feels really, really nice on my hands. The next thing that I'm going to get installed on this bike is a heated seat because that would just be amazing. Because this bike sort of feels nice and comfy like my R1250 GS Adventure bike, which has heated grips and seat, and it has a port for heated gear as well. So I would really like to have that on this bike because it's such a comfortable bike to ride, you know? That you wanna ride it as much as you can. The whole purpose of heated grips and the heated seat is to extend your riding period, you know? Obviously, I don't want to ride this thing when it's, you know, 35 degrees or maybe even 40 degrees or something like that. But today, 56 degrees, perfect. If it were 50 degrees, then uh, I would welcome a heated seat. So I'm definitely going to look into that. Now, as far as the heated grips, I have it on the highest level. Level 3 on this bike for the heated grips feels like level 2 on the 2020 Plus S1000RR. So... It's not super hot, and I am wearing the Alpine Stars GP Plus Amazing Gloves, which have a very thick layer of, uh, of leather, of course, but level three, the highest level to me, just feels warm, not very hot, which is fine, because really all I'm looking for is something to just uh, remove that sensation of chill from my body, and uh, that's what these heated grips are doing. I did notice there's a, looks like a, uh, a wire there uh, that controls the, you know, or gives power to the heated grip on the right side, the throttle side, and that probably has a state. So it was a bit of an eyesore when I first saw it because I just wasn't used to it, but it doesn't get in the way of your brake lever or anything like that, and you can't relocate it because uh, the, tr the, you know, the throttle travels as you uh, accelerate and whatnot, so you kind of need that level, uh, that wire to travel with it, so just keep in mind that's something that you're probably going to have to get used to. If anybody has an idea of uh, how that wire can be relocated, I'd be very interested to hear it, but uh, from what it looks like, it needs to be in that position, and that's fine. But the Boost itself is an amazing bike. You've already seen my review on the Boost, and if you haven't, click right above, right there, uh, and you'll uh, see a video review of the new 2022 Hayabusa. I think it's an amazing machine. Even in stock form, which mine has been in <laughs> all year, um, it's still great. Brin tuning, 
our good buddies they're working on an ecu flash for the bike because this 2022 united states spec busa stops producing power at 10,500 rpm or so it just goes completely flat and it still has uh, a little ways to go on the uh, tachometer another thousand 1500 rpm so that's one thing that they're going to do is they're going to restore full power to the bike hi which would be great and then it's also restricted as well it doesn't give you 100 percent throttle anywhere through uh the rev range and that just sucks so they have to do that in order to sell the bike in the united states to pass u.s emissions i understand but now the good folks at Brentuni will unlock this ECU and make this bike really, really, really great to ride. It's not bad now, but it could be great. And believe it or not, the Busa likes canyon roads and country roads and all that. It likes to dance on these roads. It can handle. Great for a bike its size. No, it's not a Pinnacle, a V4R or a an RSV4 or anything of the sort, but it still gives you enjoyment when you ride roads like this. If that's what you're looking for, which for most of us that ride these sport bikes, yes, we want the thrill. We want the, the acceleration, the power, the feel that these bikes offer, and we want it to the fullest. And this Busa gives you all of that. And now it gives it to you with heated grips so that you can enjoy that riding sensation when the weather is chilly. Well, this time of year, sometimes there's lots of leaves, twigs, and debris. I just ran over a small twig in the road, so you gotta be careful. Oh man, this road's just full of stuff. Because some of that stuff could uh, definitely make you lose traction and make you have an agricultural experience. And those aren't the best. Especially on a motorcycle. But what is good on this motorcycle in particular is heated grips. <laughs> so they are pretty nice and toasty. Level three is what I'm gonna use these things on. It's uh, you know, as high as they go on the Busa. Um, it definitely feels very, very warm, but not hot. So on a 56 degree day like today, I'd be curious to see if I get any sensation of heat at all out of level one or level two. I think level three is just perfect for me. And this is a great road. Nabusa loves it. Nabusa loves taking it at these speeds, by the way. You don't have to be... Oh. You know, Mark Marquez to take these roads because they're a little bit damp. But what you do need to be is very careful. Yeah. Who's going to go, guys? Me? You? Him? Her? The police? <laughs> So now I'm behind the police. So I gotta do the speed limit. And in this particular case, a digital speedometer would help. You would think that they would offer a digital speedometer in this beautiful thin film transistor center cluster, but as far as I know, they don't. That could be a future uh, update to the machine. But for right now, good old LED backlit analog is what we're working with on the Busa. It's telling me that I'm going 41 miles an hour. And that's acceptable on this particular road. That's a very beautiful bridge. People like to come by and take a look at the bridge. It's so nice. Nicely constructed. Out of uh, reinforced concrete. But yeah, folks. So yeah, I got to ride the H2 today. 
did is gave a special call out to my good buddy with his S1000 double R, the built up motor that's going to get smacked all around the South Carolina streets or any streets that I happen to encounter him on when we do catch up. That's going to be an amazing video, so make sure you stay tuned and uh, check it out. But the way that my H2 is running right now, hmm, there aren't too many motorcycles on planet Earth that can really contend with that beast. Unless, of course, you've got a turbo boost or something like that making 600 horsepower, but you better have that sucker, that boost per gear or whatever that thing is, you better have it timed just right. Because if you don't, my supercharged H2 will run away from such a motorcycle. All right, folks. Thanks for viewing the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll catch you next time on the 650 EV YouTube channel. Stock exhaust for you right there.